Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today I want to talk about something that I think is extremely important for all developers to know about and, of course, occasionally use, and that's extension methods. And these allow you to extend an existing class that you don't have the source code for and just add on methods to it. Now, it may not sound that exciting or interesting, but I think once you see some examples, you'll see how powerful and useful it can be. It can really make your code a lot cleaner and just make things easier to understand, easier to read, and easier to put together. So here I've got a simple sample project set up with just an empty scene with a light and a camera, and then this extension tester that has a single script on it. And I'm gonna open that up, show what it's doing, and then we're gonna run through the process of creating a couple extension methods. So let's open this extension tester. And here you'll see that it's just looking on enable. We create a color using red, and then we use this two hex. Now, if you look at normal color methods or color objects, here, let's just hit F12 on it. You see, there is no two hex method any second now. So here we go. You can see some of the pre-built static ones, a lot of the methods on here. There's a uh, lerp, equals, hash codes, operators, all that stuff, but there's no two hex code. So what we've done instead is just added this. Now if I hit F12 on two hex, you'll see it's actually going into this color extensions CS file. And it's a very simple method here. It's a public static string. So it's going to return back a string, which is our hex code name two hex, and then this is the important part. R literally, this is the important part. So the, this keyword right before the type here for color tells it that we want to extend the color class so that this method acts and behaves like it's a method on the color itself. So then whenever we call two hex on a color, what'll happen is this method will actually get called and it'll pass in the color that we're working with, and that'll be this object right here. So in the method, we're literally just returning a string with the little pound symbol and the HTML representation of the color, which is just the hex code. So if we look here, you see in our log, we actually got that. We got FF, 0, 0, 0, 0, FF. That's 255 on the red, 0 for green and blue, and then 255 for the alpha. So it's all working, and it's, again, just extending out that color method and giving us an ability to just dot to hex it instead of having to remember how to get the hex code and then format that. This may not be the most useful one unless you happen to get a lot of colors and need to get hex things, but there are some that I find very useful and use almost every day. And now we're just gonna go through the process of creating these. So here I have an empty class called Vector3 Extensions. Let's just take a look in the project view too. So here you'll see we have our Vector3 Extensions class. It's just a CS file, and all I've done here is remove the mono behavior part, because it's not a mono behavior. This is gonna be an extension method class. And we've added the static keyword up here because we don't wanna be instantiating our extension method class. It doesn't make sense and just wouldn't work. So here we have three comments for extension methods that I'd like to implement. And let's go over to our extension tester class and just create something real quick, and then we'll put the extension method on top of that. So let's say I want to Oh, zero out my position of this object. So this extension tester, I want to zero out maybe the Y position. It's a pretty common one that I like to use. So here, say I wanted to do like transform.position.y equals zero. Immediately, see there's an error because you can't change the position, you, or you can't change part of the position. You have to actually change the vector three and then set that. So what I like to do instead, well, here, let's go through the other options, right? Another way you could do this that would actually work would be like a var position equals that equals the transform dot position. Then we do position dot y equals zero and then transform dot position equals position. So that works. It's a way to do it, but it's three lines of code and it's pretty easy to see that you'd be copy and pasting this quite often if you did this often. And it's, I don't know, it's not as pretty as I like to see it. So how would I do this with an extension method? Well, let's, let's give it a try and see. So what we do here is instead we go equals, trans, here we do this. Actually, we get rid of the variable completely. The transform.position equals transform.position dot with y colon, whoops, zero. So it'll look just like that. So we're now we're setting the position to its own position with a y of zero. But this doesn't exist yet. So let's go create that extension method. So go into our vector3 extensions file, 
And again, it's a public static method. And then we need to give it the return type. This is going to return back a vector three. So we'll do vector three. And now I need to add the using statement for using Unity Engine. That was just removed when I cleared out the file. So it's going to return back a vector three. And this is going to be named width. Then the first parameter, again, that starts with the special keyword, this. And then the type, which is a vector three, because we're doing this on a vector three. Our position's a vector three. And then we can give this a name. We can either name it vector three or original or whatever. Let's go with original this time. Just to make it a little bit more clear what we're doing here. So now we want to return back a vector three with some parameters. And I didn't add parameters. So let's add that too. We need to add in a float for x. And I don't want it to be just a float, but let's put them in like this. So do float.y and a float dot float z. So the issue here is that now I'm requiring that I'm going to pass in an x, a y, and a z. So I could return something back out, but it's always going to have these values. So if we went over to here, here let's save this file. And here, I'm just going to return original, just as a temporary thing, just to kind of show what I'm talking about here. So now I can't do it like this. I can't do just a y parameter. It actually is going to require me to put in an x, a y, and a z. But that's, again, not what I wanted to do. You saw I have a y colon zero because I want just the y to change and I don't want the others to change. So go back into this extension and what you do is make these nullable by adding the question mark. So now these are nullable floats so it could be any float value or null and that halfway fixes the problem but I also need to give them a default. So here I just go equals null. So I'm making a bunch of optional null parameters. So they come in as null but if I change them then they'll be not null. Then what I can do in my return here is return back a new vector three. And here I just wanna look at each one of these variables and see if they're null. If they're null, I'll use the value from the original float or the original vector three. And if they're not null, then I'll use them in my new vector three. So here we say return new vector three and we do X and then a double question mark will either use X if it's not null or it'll use the value after it if it is null. So if x is null, it's going to use original.x. Otherwise, it will just use whatever we passed in. And then we just repeat this for y and z. So again, it's going to use the values that are passed in here if they're passed in. Right now, we're only passing in y. Otherwise, it'll use what's after the double question marks and just use the original. So when we call this with our initial test right here it should return back the position with a zero and a zero but right now my position is probably not zeroed out so i'll have to move the object and now i want to add in a debug log too so to debug.log color or not color position dot to string actually i probably don't need this now that i think about it because my object's just going to move anyway right so let's grab the extension tester object and i'm going to move the position of this to like 555 as soon as it finishes recompiling there we go so five a five or let's go five six and seven so now when I run our position should just change on the y value to a zero and there it goes and we're at a zero and then we logged it out and you see we have a zero there so why is this helpful well I think the most obvious reason is this is very easy for me to read and understand a lot more so than three or four lines of code and say we wanted to change multiple values on this we can just pass in you know uh, z of three and then the z is three so we could pass in whatever parameters that we want but they're all optional and again i think it just looks cleaner it feels better and it's a whole lot easier to read so let's try a couple other vector three extensions another one is flat i use this all the time so do public static vector three and we just call it flat and we just pass in an original vector three just like that and then here it's even simpler we just return a new vector three with original dot x zero original dot y or z not y and this is just flattening out the y value just making it zero so that it's zeroed out now of course if your game doesn't use zero for a, a flat level or a flat point might not work but if it's a child object of something and you want it to just flatten out in that transform hierarchy too that'll work too so just go right down to the zero again use it all the time um, especially when looking at things
We might see that later too. And then how about a direction to method? What would this do? Well, it generally gives you a direction to another vector three. So we do public static vector three direction two, and then we give it this vector three source and uh, vector three destination. Now, of course, getting a direction to an object is pretty simple. We just need to subtract them, but we have to subtract them in the right order, and then we have to um, get the mag or not the magnet, <laughs> normalize it. We have to normalize the vector as well. So, what does that look like? Well, we do like destination minus source over here. We return vector three dot normalize destination minus source. So as simple as that to just get our direction and not have to remember what order these go in or to remember the uh, normalization process. Now, of course, you should know these things and you should remember them, but you don't need to see them in your code. It's a whole lot easier to see direction to and understand exactly what you were trying to do there than it is to look at the three or four lines of code that are getting that direction and putting them into something. So how would we use that? Well, go right over here and let's add another object. So be like serialized field, private transform, transform other. And here we'll just do a debug.log transform.direction2. Oh, wait, no, transform.position.direction2. And then we give it our destination, which should be other dot position. Now you might notice that, hey, why are we having to pass in these positions? We could probably simplify this even more. So let's do that. What we'll do for that is just go into our other extension file. We have a transform extensions. And you might see how this is starting to just kind of add up and make things even cleaner, I think. And here we'll go public static uh, vector three not vector three extensions here. We need to add a using statement again. We do direction two, and then we do transform, or this transform. Form. There we go, source. And then we do transform other, or destination. That's what we called it. And then here we can simply return source.position.direction2, destination.position. Now we have an extension method calling an extension method and getting us the direction right across. Wait a minute. No. Yes, no, that's right. I had to look at it again just to make sure. But once you have them good, you're good. So you can just put these now into your tests and return them back out. So if we go into our extension tester, we can now do something as simple as this. Get rid of these positions because we already know we just want other and our direction. Now I save that off. And let's just go run it so we can see the log entry. Well, first we need to create a cube or something that we can set as the other. Then we'll run it, create the log entry, and hopefully you'll start to see the value here. So let's just move this along in that negative direction and attach right there. And I'm gonna zero this thing out for now. And then we should see the direction as negative something on the X. So what do we get? Negative 0.9 because we're going from zero to uh, negative 4.88. Are we moved on the, oh, I have a three on this axis. That's why it's not just negative one and zero. So let's change that real quick. Oh, you know what? That's my tester code right here. I added in this Z of three. So get rid of that. And then we should end up seeing a just a negative one there and a zero and a zero because it's just negative along the axis to get there. And remember that's a negative one, not a negative uh, five or whatever because we're normalizing it to just get the direction, not the actual magnitude of the dis or of the, the difference there. Anyway, there are a lot of different extension methods. Um, I use them not just for built-in Unity objects like vectors and transforms, but also for things like data structures. So if I have a data structure that's literally just holding data and I want to have some extra properties on it but I don't want to clutter that up what I'll do is then just create another extension method class that goes along with it and allows me to kind of query on that data in a more uniform way without expanding out that that just that basic data structure class so if I want to know like 
Maybe this thing has 10 different properties on them or fields on them and three of them being set means something. Maybe that means that it's usable by a player or whatever the, the weird case is. Then I'll add in like an extension method that says is usable by player and it checks to see if any of or all three of those cases are met, whatever the, the situation is. And I find myself doing that a lot too, just to keep those classes small and to keep the logic out of the strictly data classes where I'm really just trying to simplify out my querying. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. Um, if you're not using extension methods, I highly recommend it. I'll link to a post I did on this a while ago with some resources and some pre-made extension methods that you can just kind of pull into your project. I would make sure that you always take a quick look at what they're doing before you use them. So if you implement an existing extension method that somebody else's project had or you downloaded somewhere, just take a quick look and make sure that it's doing what you think it's doing because just because it's named something doesn't necessarily mean that they named it correctly or well. And it could always be doing something random that you're not intending. But usually, like I said, most time when I download these things or grab them from friends or whatever, they're pretty straightforward, pretty simple, and they're doing exactly what they say they're going to do. Anyway, like I said, I'll link to that. Uh, go check it out. If you have some other extension methods that you like or recommend that people use, please uh, comment them below. I'm thinking about putting together a little resource where people can just download a bunch of common extension methods that other Unity developers use and like. So maybe I'll add them into there if that works out. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit all the buttons, and have a great day.